It's the nuclear debate. On the one hand, we have all the scientists and the industry finance experts in energy. And on the other hand, we have Rupert Murdoch's experts. Chris Kenny, Caleb Bond, the whole Sky News team, these people are experts in nuclear energy. And so we have one side saying, no, Australia should not build nuclear power plants because they are too costly. And then there's the issue of how to dispose with the nuclear waste. But on the other hand, we have new evidence unveiled by Sky News, by Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation, that nuclear energy is actually the cheapest new form of energy. Now, how's this? Australian nuclear engineer Tony Irwin has crunched the numbers and it turns out that in the long term, nuclear is actually the cheapest form of energy. The Daily Telegraph's Piers Ackerman reported today that on Irwin's numbers, when the capacity factor, the estimated plant lifetime, transmission costs and other relevant factors are considered, the cost of building nuclear power stations to replace the nation's ageing coal-fired plants is cheaper than wind and solar and vastly more efficient than reliance on giant batteries or pumped hydro. Now, just a fortnight ago, Daisy, the Energy Minister, Chris Bowen, described a nuclear energy... Now, all prevailing wisdom, the That's science indeed, would say that nuclear is the most expensive. Yes, it is clean. So what is going on here? Why are we still having this debate? If we were to build a nuclear energy plant right now, it wouldn't be up and running for 10 years. They cost 20 billion to build. Even the small modular ones don't work particularly well. But let's just have a look at the debate. Here we have Caleb Bond, an expert from the Adelaide Advertiser who made it all the way to Sky News. No need for a university education because he has hit the big time, becoming a Murdoch pundit. Just a fortnight ago, the energy minister, Chris Bowen, described nuclear energy as a complete joke. He said, doesn't he have egg on his face now? That's Caleb's take. And why was Caleb saying this? Because the energy minister does think nuclear energy is a joke, as do most experts, because it is too expensive. It is clean, but it's too expensive. Who are the people quoted here? The Australian, another Murdoch publication, was rabbiting on about it again today, how we have to go nuclear for baseload energy. None of the experts are saying this, but the Australian's saying it. So where do they get their experts from? Well, here we are. This gets to the nub of it. We are getting to Murdoch's experts. Caleb Bond on Sky News cited in evidence that Chris Bowen was a complete joke, cited a story in the Daily Telegraph newspaper, another Murdoch publication. Here he is to quote, new research reveals that nuclear energy is actually the cheapest form of energy. Now, the experts that Caleb Bond relies on here, we have a preeminent global expert, a prodigious expert, who goes by the name of Piers Ackerman, who's an uber conservative Murdoch columnist, has been for years, one of Murdoch's greatest lackeys. Now he is saying in his expert opinion that nuclear energy is the cheapest. So here are the numbers from the CSIRO where they actually have scientists and not pundits. They value nuclear energy at 128 to 332 a megawatt hour to produce. 90% wind and solar PV with integration costs, they value at 55 to $80 an hour, less than half the nuclear cost. Coal is cheaper. They are all cheaper than nuclear energy. Now, backing up the CSIRO is the World Economic Forum, is IRENA, is the IEA, the International Energy Agency. All these global agencies that base their decisions on science all say that nuclear is not only dangerous because of the waste, but it is also perilously expensive to build a nuclear energy plant. And it won't be done before the climate is irretrievably damaged in 2030. So this is a complete distraction. It's utter nonsense. And the people at News Corporation, Rupert Murdoch's people actually understand this. They understand it, that it's nonsense, that it's never going to happen. There is not the appetite to create nuclear energy in Australia, let alone the money when the cost 
of wind and solar in ongoing production does not involve mining. It's free. So what's going on here? Well, this is classic. This is quintessential Murdoch stuff. It's a distraction. They know nuclear energy is not viable. It's like carbon capture and storage and coal mines and gas plants. You can do it scientifically, but it does not make commercial sense. Therefore, it is not viable. It simply costs too much. And the debate was over two years ago. The debate about the cost of energy, at least two years ago. We called it three or four or five years ago. Solar is the cheapest, then wind and hydro and so on. New coal is now more expensive to build. That's why we won't see a new coal fire power plant in Australia either. Despite the Luddites, despite people like Barnaby Joyce and Matt Canavan playing up to their coal donors, their vested interests, despite the Murdoch people banging the table about it daily, reliable baseload power. The problems in the grid at the moment, of course, are because coal is not reliable. In any case, if the debate was over two years ago when the IEA declared, the International Energy Agency declared in its World Energy Outlook that solar power is the cheapest electricity in history, cheaper than coal and gas in most major countries. That was two years ago. It's moving at a very rapid pace. So what are they doing? What are these Murdoch people rabbiting on about with all this nonsense? It's classic. It is a distraction. They, knew, they know it doesn't work, but they want to play to this idea that they've come up with their clean emissions answer. They know it will never happen, but they need to have a hat at the table. They need to have their keys in the ring. And so what are they doing? They're coming up with a contrarian view. It's more of this sort of Murdoch creating enemies. The enemy remains renewable energy because we have a better option. It's solar power and our experts like peers have told us that this is so. So the latest thing, they're just trying to create division and debate and say that everybody else is wrong. They're all woke, latte sipping lefties. Anybody that doesn't like coal, they've lost that debate. They realize they have no basis to continue to push coal and gas will be next, just as emitting as coal. So what they're doing with this nuclear thing, they're talking about SMRs. You'll hear a bit about SMRs, small modular reactors. So what they're saying is that, oh, don't spend 20 to $30 billion on a new nuclear energy plant because that'll take 10 years to get up and running. Let's build a number of SMRs, small modular reactors. Now, like carbon capture and storage, this has been tried elsewhere around the world. And the problem with it again is that it actually doesn't work or it hasn't been seen to work efficiently to date. If the Chinese can't get it going, the Russians can't get it going, the Americans and the Brits can't get SMRs going, why are we even talking about them when we have free solar and wind? Because Murdoch wants to be a player in this debate. It's all about media creating goodies and baddies, liberal good, Labor bad, green terrible. It's all this goodies and baddies Murdoch narrative. Thanks to Giles Parkinson at Renew Economy. We're gonna quote his research into this because he's gone and looked at them all around the world. We're gonna give you a couple of examples of the incredible success of SMRs, which the Murdoch press is pushing. And here it is. The track record with SMRs around the world has been pitiful. Just a handful of projects most or all exhibiting familiar patterns of massive cost overruns and multi-year delays. Here's a few of the key ones in evidence that this is a, just a bizarre proposition from the Murdoch flat earthers. Russia's floating nuclear plant was nine years behind schedule, more than six times over budget, and the electricity it produces is estimated to cost an exorbitant US $200 a megawatt hour, according to the OECD's Nuclear Energy Agency. That would be a source that the Murdoch minions would be fleeing from. They would never go near a serious source like that. Why would you when you have Piers Ackerman and Chris Kenny and the lobbyists from Ansto? The only other operational SMR anywhere in the world China's high temperature gas cooled SMR was two to three times more expensive than initial estimates. It was eight years behind schedule 
and plans for additional reactors at the same site have been dropped. The SMR in Argentina, seven years behind schedule, a billion dollar cost overruns, current cost estimate is 23 times higher than preliminary estimates, 23 times higher. So by the time we did it in Australia and spent our $5 billion on our SMR, that would have gone out to 20 to $30 billion for a small nuclear reactor when the climate has been destroyed by 2035. Not a very sensible policy outcome. China recently began construction of an SMR based on conventional light water reactor technology. According to its Nuclear Energy Corporation, construction cost per kilowatt hour will be twice the cost of large reactors and the levelized cost of electricity will be 50% higher than large reactors. So not only do they take a long time to build, are hugely expensive, they're not efficient either. So there you have it. It doesn't work like carbon capture of storage, yet it is being feverishly espoused in the Murdoch press. They're coming up with stories about nuclear and energy daily. Their copy is paywalled. It is losing influence. The ABC has just said it doesn't want to showcase its newspapers, Murdoch newspapers in the mornings on its breakfast television. These guys are in a bind and they have to be controversial, combative even, to maintain their tiny Sky News audience, which they package up, as recent research found, and send it all around the world as evidence that their climate-denying analysis has legs. It is a classic misinformation propaganda machine, which is subsidised by us, the taxpayer, and they are looking for a cause celeb. They are looking for relevance. Their bullying tactics are on the way, and so they will come up with any proposition possible to create a difference, to create a media narrative. And this nuclear narrative, despite it being majestically ill-conceived, has no legs, but that will not stop them from carping on about it. Thank you for supporting us here. Check out the website for stories on nuclear energy and on fossil fuel subsidies, on the 114 new fossil fuel projects that we've got going, that we've got to have to fight Labor on now because that is not sustainable. The world says no new fossil fuel projects. And here we are, 114 new fossil fuel projects on the boil and the subsidies for foreign corporations as high as they ever were. In fact, higher. Thank you for being a supporter. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And if you can throw us a few bucks, that'd be fantastic. Thank you.